So here we have a big view. Okay? Just look at it. Leviticus 16, 11 through 14, Jesus enters the most holy place and exits in AD 31. Leviticus 16, 15 to 17, enters again the most holy place in 1844 and has not exited yet. Leviticus 16, 18 and 19, he goes out onto the altar that is before the Lord and makes an atonement for it in the holy place. And then Leviticus 16, 20 and 21, he places the sins on the scapegoat. Okay? We have jumped as Adventists from the most holy to placing the sins on the scapegoat. We've completely missed the whole part. Completely. Nobody has picked it up. Nobody. God has kept us blind to that until right now. You're going to see why. In the great day of final award, the dead are to be judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. Revelation 20:12. Then by virtue of the atoning blood of Christ, the sins of all the truly penitent will be blotted out from the books of heaven. Thus, the sanctuary will be freed or cleansed from the record of sin. In the type, this great work of atonement or blotting out of sins was represented by the service on the day of atonement. The cleansing of the earthly sanctuary, which was accomplished by the removal by virtue of the blood of the sin offering of the sins by which it had been polluted. Patriots and Prophets 357, 358. Now we go to Leviticus 16, 22, 23, and 24. The sin problem is still not resolved. Look here. And he shall let go the goat in the wilderness. And Aaron shall come back into the tabernacle of the congregation in the holy place and shall put off. He takes off the linen garments, which he put on when he went into the holy place, into the most holy. You can check that in Strong's. And shall leave them there. And he shall wash his flesh with water in the holy place and put on his garments, garments of vengeance. I have written that because we're going to see it. And come forth and offer his burnt offering in the outer court and the burnt offering for the people and make an atonement for himself and for the people. Leviticus 16, 22, 23, and 24. Let me, re let me review. Comes out of the most holy place. He intercedes in the holy place. A lot of things happen that we have not covered yet. He then takes the sins and puts them at the door on the head of the scapegoat. He comes back into the holy place, changes his garments and takes them off and puts on the garments of vengeance. Then he goes outside to the outer court and offers, and offers the rest of the animals that had not been offered until that moment. Then I saw that Jesus' work in the sanctuary will soon be finished. And after his work there is finished, notice she, he, she says sanctuary, not most holy place. And after his work there is finished, he will come to the door of the first apartment, the holy place, and confess the sins of Israel upon the head of the scapegoat. Then he will put on the garments of vengeance. Then the plagues will come upon the wicked and they do not come until Jesus puts on that garment, the garments of vengeance and takes his place upon the great white cloud. Then, while the plagues are falling, the scapegoat is being led away. He makes a mighty struggle to escape, but he is held fast by the hand that leads him. If he should effect his escape, Israel would lose their lives. I saw that it would take time to lead away the scapegoat into the land of forgetfulness after the sins were put on his head. Why does it take time? Because we're told that the plagues do not commence until the sins are placed on Satan. The plagues start only after he puts on the garments of vengeance and he places his sins on Satan. And that's why she says, I saw that it would take time to lead away the scapegoat into the land of forgetfulness 
after these things were placed on his, were put on his head. The great white cloud I saw was not the holy place, but entirely separate from the holy and most holy, entirely separate from the sanctuary. We now know that it's a cloud of angels. October 23, 1850, found in the Spalding and McGain collection, page 2. Now we go to Leviticus 16, 24 to 28. And he shall wash his flesh with water in the holy place and put on his garments and come forth to the outer court and offer his burnt offering and the burnt offering of the people and make an atonement for himself and for the people. Hold on. I thought he had made an atonement in the most holy place. No. He had offered a sin offering in the holy place. This is a burnt offering. So, yes, he had made an atonement in the most holy place for himself and for the people, but now the sin is moving. The sin is being transferred. The animals that were killed have to be burnt. We're going to get to all of that. And the fat of the sin offering shall he burn upon the altar. And he that let go the goat for the scapegoat shall wash his clothes and bathe his flesh in water and afterward come into the camp. And the bullock for the sin offering, and the goat for the sin offering, whose blood was brought in to make an atonement in the holy place, shall one carry forth without the camp. And they shall burn in the fire their skins, and their flesh, and their dung. And he that burneth them shall wash his clothes, and bathe his flesh in water, and afterwards he shall come into the camp. Now, look my note there and put on his garments. Those are the garments of vengeance. In Leviticus 16, 24 to 28, when he puts on the garments of vengeance, that's when the plagues commence. As soon as he does that, while the plagues are going, he has still to do this in the outer court. Look at my note. Notice that the cleansing of the sanctuary did not finish the cleansing for himself and for the people. After the scapegoat had been sent into the wilderness, the high priest still had to offer the burnt offerings and burn the fat of the sin offerings on the altar in the court to complete the atonement of the day, which was required to cleanse the people. Now we go to Leviticus 16, 29 to 34. This closes the chapter. And this shall be a statute forever. The day of atonement is a statute. All of the feasts are statutes. The sabbatical year is a statute. The jubilee year is a statute. Tithing is a statute. Alcohol is a statute. Not drinking blood is a statute. Not eating grease is a statute. Unclean animals is a statute. These are all statutes. They are so important that the, that the New International Version of the Bible has completely taken them out. You cannot find the word statues in the New International Version. And yet, it is the Bible that is being used in a lot of our churches now. Friends, this is serious stuff. And this shall be a statute forever unto you, that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of the month, ye shall afflict your souls. That's with fasting and prayer. It was the most sacred day of the year. The Jews do it by fasting and do no work at all. It shall be a Sabbath of rest unto you, and ye shall afflict your souls by a statute forever. And the priest whom he shall anoint shall make an atonement for the holy sanctuary, and he shall make an atonement for the tabernacle of the congregation and for the altar, and he shall make an atonement for the priest and for all the people of the congregation. And this shall be an everlasting statute unto you. Leviticus 16, 29 to 34. Three times the word statutes is repeated in this five verses. Do you think they are important? You know, the day of atonement has become for me the most important day of the year. It is a day that it's a high Sabbath. It's, it's much, much more than a Sabbath because it's, it, uh, it's, it's a holy convocation. You, I drink no food. I eat no food. I drink no water. 
you float with the Lord. You spend the day looking, Lord, what am I doing in my life that's wrong? Lord, talk to me. You can't talk too much. You can't sing. You can't do it with other people because you get weak. Not drinking for 24 hours and not eating for 24 hours is not easy. Okay? You ought to try it. It's coming up. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Can you imagine where we would be as a people if we kept the Day of Atonement every year? We are told that we're living in the antitypical Day of Atonement. We're not supposed to be sinning. You couldn't sin. If there was sin in the camp on the Day of Atonement, the priest would die inside the tabernacle. We've read that from Ellen White. Imagine where we would be in our sin problem if we had done this all these years. Some prophecies God has repeated, thus showing that importance must be given to them. The Lord does not repeat things that are of no great consequence. Manuscript releases, volume 8, page 413. That's why statutes is important. Three times repeated. Let the churches who claim to believe the truth, who are advocating the law of God, keep that law and depart from all iniquity. Let the individual members of the church resist the temptations to practice evil and indulge in sin. Let the church commence the work of purification before God by repentance, humiliation, deep heart searching, for we are in the antitypical day of atonement, solemn hour fraught with eternal results. Selected Messages, Book 2, page 378. 135 years ago. And yet we have pastors, the majority. Oh no, you can't do that until we get to the latter rain. We can receive the latter rain if we have sins. We're going to cover that. It's, it's totally backwards. Totally backwards. Why? Because we don't want to let go of our sins. Simple as that. It's all about sin. Leviticus 16, 18, and 19, a second look. Now is when we start seeing things that we've never seen before. Now is when it gets interesting. And he shall go out unto the altar that is before the Lord and make an atonement for it. Leviticus 16, 18, and 19. Revelation 8, 1 to 3, and verse 5. Notice. And when he had opened the seventh seal... There was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God. And to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar. Has to be the golden altar. There's no, gold, there's no altar in the most holy place. So this has to be in Revelation 8. has to take place in the holy place where the golden altar is. And another angel came and stood at the altar, having a golden censer in the holy place. Now we're in the holy place. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. Revelation 8, 1 to 3 and 5. The setting is the seventh seal. The trumpets are about to sound. And the angel that stands at the altar, having a golden censer, is Jesus who had already left the most holy place in fulfillment of Leviticus 16, 18, and cast it into the earth, represents the close of human probation. At this point, when probation closes for the entire world, at this point, trumpet number one, Revelation 8, 7, has still not sounded. Okay? So probation closes before the first trumpet sounds. This is the only place in Scripture where a censer is thrown down or cast into the earth. It follows then that any commentary in the spirit of prophecy on a censer being thrown down has to be a commentary on Revelation 8, 5. Now this is Ellen White commenting on Revelation 8, 
But she doesn't say she's commenting on Revelation 8. Whether she picked this up or not, I'm not sure, but you're going to see that the Holy Spirit picked it up. We are told by Ellen White that Daniel, chapter 7 through 12, he did not understand what he was writing. But the Holy Spirit understood it and did it for our time now. The same thing could happen here. Look what she says. I saw angels herring to and fro in heaven. An angel, a regular angel, with a writer's inkhorn by his side, returned from the earth and reported to Jesus that his work was done and the saints were numbered and sealed. Then I saw Jesus who had been ministering before the ark in the most holy, containing the Ten Commandments, throw down the censer in the holy. Revelation 8, 1 to 5. I'm going to repeat that. Then I saw Jesus who had been, he had been in the most holy place, had left it. Now he's standing in front of the golden altar and he throws down the censer. He raised his hands with a loud voice and said, it is done. And all the angelic hosts laid off their crowns as Jesus made the solemn declaration. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And did ha he that is holy, let him be holy still. Every case had been decided for life or death in the most holy. Every case gets decided in the most holy. While Jesus had been ministering in the sanctuary, most holy and holy, the judgment had been going on for the righteous dead and then for the righteous living. Early writings, pages 279 and, 27 and 280. Notice what I, have, what I have. Every case is decided in the most holy place, but the censor is cast into the earth in the holy place, and it is there that probation closes. Very important. Uh, you, you, you may be confused now. We're going to clear it all up. It is there that probation closes. Okay, but hold on. Every case is decided in the most holy place. We're going to read that. Every case is decided in the most holy place, but probation closes in the holy place. All the quotes that you see from Ellen White refer to when the censor is cast down. That's when probation closes. We're going we're gonna to get to that. Early writings commenting on Revelation 8. Every case had been decided for life or death. While Jesus had been ministering in the sanctuary, the judgment had been going on for the righteous dead and then for the righteous living. Christ had received his kingdom in the holy place. That's my notes. Having made an atonement for his people and blotted out their sins in the holy place. The subjects of the kingdom were made up. The marriage of the Lamb was consummated in the holy place. And the kingdom and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven was given to Jesus in the holy place. And the heirs of salvation. And Jesus was to reign as King of kings and Lord of lords. Ellen White, page 280. Early writings, page 280. Note that she says, while Jesus had been ministering in the sanctuary, which includes the most holy, Every case is decided in the most holy, but once Jesus leaves the most holy, all the other activities shown here take place in the holy place. And there's a quote coming that will say that. Okay, we're going to read it now. This is the great controversy commenting on Revelation 8. Again, she doesn't say this Revelation 8. You're going to see the language is almost identical. When the third angel message closes, everybody's done. The work is done. Mercy no longer pleads for the guilty inhabitants of the earth. The people of God have accomplished their work. They have received the latter rain, the refreshing from the presence of the Lord, and they are prepared for the trying hour before them. Angels are hastening to and fro in heaven. An angel, the same angel of early writings, an angel returning from the earth announces that his work is done announces to Jesus as he's standing in front of the golden altar in the holy place, Revelation 8, 1 to 5. The final test has been brought upon the world, and all who have proved themselves loyal to the divine precepts have received the seal of the living God in the holy place. 
Then Jesus ceases his intercession in the sanctuary. She doesn't say in the most holy place. Then he ceases his intercession in the sanctuary because he had already left the most holy place. He lifts his hands and with a loud voice says, it is done. And all the angelic hosts lay off their crowns as he makes the solemn announcement in the holy place. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Revelation 22, 11. Every case has been decided for life or death. Great controversy, 613. Now let's go back and look at Leviticus 16, 21. A second look at Leviticus 16, 21. And Aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and shall send him away by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. Leviticus 16, 21. As we have seen, in order, this, this is my language now. As we have seen, in order to fulfill Leviticus 16, 18, Jesus must leave the most holy place on a day of atonement. But in order to fulfill Leviticus 16, 21, the sending of the scapegoat into the wilderness must also take place on a day of atonement one year later. For this reason, I have always believed that the plagues would last one year. But in studying for this video, I have understood the sanctuary as never before. And my position on the plague, plagues was erroneous. After Jesus leaves the most holy place, quote, He tarried a moment in the outer apartment of the heavenly sanctuary and the sins which had been confessed while he was in the most holy place were placed upon Satan. This is Ellen White. I'm going to give you the quote. This quote, tearing time, lasts exactly one year. From the day he lives on a day of atonement, the most holy place, to the day he lives, he places his sins on Satan, also on the Day of Atonement, the following Day of Atonement. This tearing time lasts one year from one Day of Atonement when Jesus leaves the Most Holy until the next Day of Atonement when he places his sins upon Satan. This is very important to pick this up. Let me see if I can make it a little clearer. I think you'll see it in the next quote. Jesus leaves the most holy place in Leviticus 16, 18 on a day of atonement to fulfill Leviticus 16, 18. But Leviticus 16, 21 says that the sins are placed on Satan on a day of atonement. Both events cannot happen at the same time. So Jesus has to leave on a day of atonement and the following day of atonement, a space of a year, Jesus goes into the holy place, atones for the holy place, probate, the, the latter rain comes, the ceiling comes, persecution comes, the time of trouble commences, probation closes. After all of that, right before Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, on the day of atonement, the day that we are delivered, and if you've seen my, my series, 6,000 years and in the, in the year 2022, there's a whole section on that. We are delivered on the, on the Day of Atonement. We're going to cover it here, but much lighter. We are delivered at the, on the Day of Atonement. That's when we hear the voice of God declaring the day and the hour of Jesus' coming. We look up and we say, it is the voice of God. We're delivered on that day. The sins are placed upon Satan, and we will witness the sins being placed upon Satan in heaven. Had never picked that up. Nobody has ever picked that up either. We've never seen it. We've never studied these things. Look at this quote coming. Now the event takes place foreshadowed in the last solemn service of the Day of Atonement. When the ministration in the Holy of Holies, most holy place, 
had been completed, the scapegoat was presented alive before the Lord. So there's a whole space there that is not being covered. And she quotes Leviticus 16, 21. In like manner, she says, when the work of atonement in the heavenly sanctuary has been completed, then in the presence of God and heavenly angels and the host of the redeemed, the sins of God's people will be placed upon Satan. He will be declared guilty of all the evil which he has caused them to commit. And as the scapegoat was sent away into the land not inhabited, so Satan will be banished to the desolate earth and uninhabited and dreary wilderness. Great Controversy 658. Almost at the end of the Great Controversy. This is the final event. This is the final thing that happens. This is when the sins are placed on Satan. Okay? So even though probation closes... And the plagues commence and the trumpets commence. All of that happens. And then at the very end of that is when he puts the sins on Satan. We're going to cover this now in detail. This is why I told you this is a complicated study. You're going to have to go back. This has taken me 50 hours or not 50 hours. No, it's taken me probably 200 hours to study. But now I've made it hopefully clear from the spirit of prophecy and scripture so that you don't have to go through what I went through, but you're going to have to go through this carefully and read it and pray and say, Lord, is this real? In other words, the censor is cast down. The time of Jacob's trouble commences. The plagues commence. The plagues we have been told last months as the plagues in Egypt. And then at the end of all of that time, after Jesus goes out into the most holy, into the outer court and does the sin offering for himself and for his house and for the people, the burnt offering, I'm sorry. Then at that time, the sins are placed upon Satan. Way at the end, way just before Jesus comes to earth, that's when the sins are placed upon Satan. We have a long time in between. Let my people go that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. The king was filled with madness at these words. His impulse was to kill the messengers before his face, but a spell seemed to be upon him. He felt himself under the control of a power he could not understand. Now the great controversy was fully entered upon. For months, the warfare between the prince of life and the prince of darkness was carried on. You read that in the Bible, in the ten plagues, and you say, okay, this lasted three weeks, four months. God's ways are not man's ways. He gave each plague time to do its work and to impress the Egyptians. The, our Lord trying to save the Egyptians. He loves you. He loves me. He's trying to save us people. He, we need to realize that he want, this is to save us. But we've been deceived by the devil and we got to get it right now. We can't afford to mess it anymore now. We're out of time. You'll see. For months, the warfare between the prince of life and the prince of darkness was carried on. God's ways are not man's ways. He gave each plague time to do its work and to impress the Egyptians, to let them see that there is a supreme ruler to whom every created thing must bow. The contest between the king of Egypt and the Lord of heaven came to the knowledge of all Egypt. For the works of God covered so much time that none were in ignorance. The Lord gave a respite after each plague in which abundant opportunity was given for repentance and for obedience. To the command, let my people go. Youth instructor... Pages 271 and 272, April 8 and April 15, 1897. Two different articles in the Jews Instructor, one volume, great big books like the Review and Herald. Most people have never even heard of it. Thank God we bought it because we had youth and we bought it. We bought all these books. Now notice this quote. The plagues upon Egypt when God was about to deliver Israel were similar in character to those more terrible and extensive judgments which are to fall upon the world just before, just before the final deliverance of God's people. Great Controversy, pages 627, 628. 
So the plagues that are coming are worse than the ones in Egypt, which lasted months. We know that one of the trumpets lasts five months. So they got to last at least six. Okay? That's my thought. Okay. Now we continue. Now look at this. We go back to early writings, page 280, and we look at this again. Look at this. As Jesus moved out of the most holy place, I heard the tinkling of the bells upon his garment. And as he left, a cloud of darkness covered the inhabitants of the earth. There was then no mediator between guilty man and an offended God. No mediator. When Jesus leaves the most holy place, there is no mediator between the wicked and God. Notice. While Jesus had been standing between God and guilty man, a restraint was upon the people. But when he stepped out from between man and the Father, the restraint, the restraint was removed and Satan had entire control of who? The finally impenitent, the wicked. Once Jesus leaves the most holy place, a great darkness covers the inhabitants of the earth. Not physical darkness, but spiritual darkness, along with natural disasters like we haven't seen, etc. And there's no restraint to hold the wicked back from hurting us. Okay? It was impossible for the plagues to be poured out while Jesus officiated in the sanctuary. Notice, not in the most holy place. Because the plagues come after he throws down the censer. We're going to see that. But after he leaves the most holy place, the plagues are still in the future. Months in the future. We're going to see that. It was impossible for the plagues to be poured out while Jesus officiated in the sanctuary. But as his work there is finished in the holy place, and his intercession closes in the holy place, there is nothing to stay the wrath of God, and it breaks with fury upon the shelterless head of the guilty sinner, who has slighted salvation and hated reproof. In that fearful time after the close of Jesus' mediation, the saints were living in the sight of a holy God without an intercessor. Every case was decided, every jewel numbered. Jesus tarried a moment in the outer apartment of the heavenly sanctuary, and the sins which had been confessed while he was in the most holy place were placed upon Satan, the originator of sin, who must suffer the punishment. Early Writings 280. There was then no mediator between guilty man. Satan had entire control of the finally impenitent. But will the prayer of the saints, the 144,000 and his children, who do not see and keep the Sabbath, still be ascending before God? You know, there are people, I have met them, you have met them, Sabbath keepers, many of them feast keepers, that are more consecrated, better Christians, following all the light they have, struggling with sin, Ministers out there that are telling people, get rid of sin. Brace yourselves for what is coming. There's not going to be a rapture. I have heard these ministers. They're not Seventh-day Adventists. They don't understand the Sabbath. These people are, are right now in the shaking time like we are. They, are. they are settling into the truth. They're following every ray of light they have. They will not do something that goes against their conscience. They're very, very particular. These are good Christians. There's millions of them. When Jesus leaves the most holy place, these people are still out there, and the 144,000 have to go and get them. They've never heard about the Sabbath. The, Sa the Sunday law may not come before Jesus leaves the most holy place. That's another thing you've, we've never heard before. He's going to shock you tonight. These people have to be, go, have, we have to go out and get them. The 144,000 have to go out and get them. Listen. And when he had opened the seventh seal, 
There was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And I saw the seven angels which stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer. Jesus leaves the most holy place. The golden censer is still smoking. He walks into the holy place with the holy censer smoking. Follow me here. And there was given unto him much incense. An angel comes and says, here's more incense. That he should offer it with the prayer of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. He's now left the most holy place. This is Revelation 8 verse 4. We have missed it. Everybody had missed it. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended before God out of the angel's hand. In Revelation 8, 4, before he throws down the censer, Jesus is still interceding. But there is no mediator between God and guilty man. Okay? I'm sorry that I'm repeating myself, but this took me... I've had to wrestle with this over and over. Lord, is this what I'm seeing? You need to go and do your homework. And the angel took the censer and filled it with fire off the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. And the seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. So in Revelation 8, 4, he is still interceding. But at that very moment, an angel with a writer's inkhorn comes and says, Jesus, the saints are all sealed. The third angel's message has closed. And as he's about to get more incense, he takes the, incense, the, the golden censer and casts it into the earth and probation closes. Okay? Jesus moves out of the most holy place with the censer still smoking. Le Le Leviticus 16, 16 to 18. And continues to intercede for his saints. Revelation 8, 4. Then... An angel with a writer's inkhorn by his side returned from the earth and reported to Jesus that his work was done. And the saints were numbered and sealed. Early writings 279, Great Controversy 613. Then Jesus took the censer and cast it into the earth. Revelation 8.5. Probation closes in verse 5. Trumper number 1 does not sound until verse 7 when the third part of the trees was burnt up. In Revelation 7, 3, Jesus had commanded, Heard not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have seen the sealed the servants of our God. Human probation closes before trumpet number one sounds. But so long as Jesus remains man's intercessor in the sanctuary above, the restraining influence of the Holy Spirit is felt by rulers and people. It still controls to some extent the laws of the land. Great Controversy 610. As long as Jesus remains man's intercessor in the sanctuary, she does not say in the most holy place. He has left the most holy place. He's in the holy place until Revelation 8, 5. He's still interceding in Revelation 8, 4. The Lord has shown me in vision that Jesus rose up and shut the door and entered the Holy of Holies at the seventh month. 1844. But Michael standing up, Daniel 12.1, to deliver his people is in the future. This will not take place until Jesus has finished his priestly office in the heavenly sanctuary. See how the Holy Spirit was guiding her. In the heavenly sanctuary. And lays off his priestly attire. And puts on his most kingly robes. This is after he walks, puts the hands on, on Satan, walks back, takes off his clothes, puts on the garments of vengeance, and then the plague commence. And there's still months in front of us. Then the plague commence. This will be the time of Jacob's trouble, Jeremiah 35 to 8, out of which the saints will be delivered by the voice of God. A word to the little flock, page 12. At that time shall Michael stand up, Daniel 12, 1. Then Jesus ceases his intercession in the sanctuary. Again, in great controversy, she does not say in the most holy place. We've always thought, oh, when Jesus leaves the most holy place, Daniel 12, 1 starts. No, not so. You won't see it. 
Then Jesus ceases his intercession in the sanctuary in the holy place above. He lifts his hands and with a loud voice says, it is done. The eye of God looking down the ages was fixed upon the crisis which his people are to meet when earthly power shall be erased and arrayed against them. Like the captive exile, they will be in fear of death by starvation or by violence. If the blood of Christ's faithful witness were shed at this time, it would not, like the blood of the martyrs, be a seed sown to yield a harvest for God. Why? Probation has closed. There's no sense in having any more martyrs. Their fidelity would not be a testimony to convince others of the truth, for the obdurate heart was, has beaten back the waves of mercy until they return no more. Great controversy 613 and 634. 613 is when chapter 39 of the Great Controversy begins. I think 634 is the last page. Events that must take place before Jesus leaves the most holy place. There's only one event. Only one. Seventh-day Adventists have been taught that the National Sunday Law is the final test for God's people. You will not find that statement anywhere. That is the test for those, quote, those of God's children who do not see and keep the Sabbath. They have not rejected the light upon it. I'm going to give you that quote. But Seventh-day Adventists know better. Our close of probation comes as a thief in the night. Just like theirs comes as a thief in the night because every case is decided in the most holy place. If they're not struggling with sin now, if they're not fasting and praying and, and trying to please God now, they're part of the wicked and they're going to be washed out in, in the most holy place. This is where we are right now, folks. This is a serious, serious message. Okay? Our close of probation comes as a thief in the night and we will be held to a much higher standard. As Peter declared, for the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. 1 Peter 4.17. I'm going to give you the quotes now. This is not my saying. This is what she's saying. There are many souls to come out of the ranks of the world, out of the churches, even the Catholic Church, whose zeal will far exceed that of those who have stood in rank and file to proclaim the truth heretofore. For this reason, the 11th hour laborers will receive their penny. Selected Messages, Book 3, page 386. You should read the rest of that quote. It's beautiful. These people are serious about God. These people are better Christians than we are. They don't, know the, they don't have the light that we have, but the light that they have, they're following it to the T. And now, for the sake of the universe, Jesus knows whether they're going to make it or not. We don't. They don't. But for the sake of the universe, they have to go through the testing time. They have to go through the mark of the beast. They have to prove themselves worthy for the sake of the universe. But Jesus knows before he leaves the most holy place, I know that guy is going to be faithful, but I'm still going to have to test him. He doesn't want any more hypocrites in heaven. He cannot afford another Satan in heaven. We've been told that sin will never rise his ugly head again. Okay? The Lord has shown me clearly that the image of the beast will be, will be formed before probation closes. For it is to be the great test for the people of God by which their eternal destiny will be decided. This is the test that the people of God must have before they are sealed. Seventh-day Adventist Bible Commentary, Volume 7, page 976. You will not find the Sunday law anywhere for the people of God. Anywhere. You look and find it. You can't find it. The Sunday law is the test for the 11th hour workers. Not for the professed believers. Seventh-day Adventists that are, not, that are not trying to please God. Those are, those, are, those are washed out during the most holy place along with the wicked. This is, this is, this is a powerful message. Friends, I, I don't want you to take my word for it. I want you to study what we're going to cover here. Because we still have much, much material to cover. We're going to cover the ceiling, the close of probation, Jacob's time of trouble. Uh, we're going to see what we're going to cover now. But this is clearly the test. The image of the beast will be formed before probation closes. Notice she says, the Lord has shown me clearly. 
It is the image of the beast that will be a test for God's people, not the Sunday law. Events that shall take place after Jesus leaves the most holy place. The little time of trouble commences. The little time of trouble. I thought all along the little time of trouble was going on since the 42 months started. No, has not commenced. Does not commence until Jesus leaves the most holy place. We're going to read it. Probation closes for the wicked and the professed believers. The latter rain, the sealing, the blotting out of sins, the close of probation, Jacob's time of trouble, and the seven trumpets. All those events take place after Jesus leaves the most holy place, according to Leviticus 16. We will cover each of these events in detail. I, I don't want to lose you. I'm, I know that we've been through a lot. I wanted to show you those slides so that you can understand that we're more advanced than we think. Uh, the setting for the great controversy where it says Satan has studied the laboratories of nature, that's going on. And we have not seen it because we have been blindfolded by the news media in this country and we don't get news from other parts of the world. But when you see in a period of 46 days, so many natural disasters happening, so much all over the world, something is getting ready to happen, friends. Why is 2022 such a suspicious year? Before we study the image of the beast and those seven events, please consider the following three slides, which I have taken from my presentation on YouTube, 6,000 years and in the year 2022. There you have it in case you want to look at it and you have not had the chance. It's five parts. Each part is long. It takes you from, this was done two or three years ago now, uh, longer than that. It's been done four years ago, almost five years ago. Um, if you haven't seen it, I urge you to see it. Why is 2022 so suspicious? This is why. The Jewish economy revolves around the Jubilee year, which was the climax of seven sabbatical cycles, each one ending on a sabbatical year. The sabbatical year was also known as the acceptable year of the Lord. Isaiah 61, 2, Luke 4, 19. The year of release, Deuteronomy 31, 10. The year of my redeemed, Isaiah 63, 4. And the year of recompenses, Isaiah 34, 8. Do you have any doubt that the sabbatical year is when we are re redeemed? When we are, when the recompenses come to the wicked? The year of release? The acceptable year of the Lord, Luke 4, 19, where it says, I have come to heal the brokenhearted, to heal the, cure the blind, etc., etc. It is a biblical principle that God's people will be delivered at the end of a sabbatical year. At the end of every seven years, that shall make a release, Deuteronomy 15, 1. At the end of a sabbatical year, not at the beginning, at the end. At the end of every seven years, in the solemnity of the year of release, Deuteronomy 31.10, in the solemnity of the year of release. At the end of seven years, let ye go every man, his brother a Hebrew, Jeremiah 34.4. Biblical principle that we have to be delivered on a sabbatical year. We don't know when, but this is a fact. I've shared this with you before. This is slide 709 in that five-part series on the 6,000 years. And... I want to just go through this one more time with you to appeal, to reason with you. Item number one, eight major biblical dates all took place on sabbatical or midst of the week years. All are found in the great controversy. You move any one year and they all fall apart. Friends, if this doesn't convince you that the sabbatical year is 2022. Yes, there's one in 2029. There's one in 2036. But the sabbatical, the next sabbatical year is 2022. Listen. 
Event number one, 457 BC, the commencement of the 2300 day prophecy. It took place on a sabbat at the end of a sabbatical year. Event number two, AD 27, when Jesus was baptized, it took place at the end of a sabbatical year. Event number four, AD 34, when probation closed for the Jews, the end of a sabbatical year. The midst of the week, which Daniel 9, 24 to 27 talks about, the midst of the week was 31. You've got three and a half years in, on one side, three and a half years on the other. 27 to 34, the midst was 31. Jesus was crucified. Item number five, 538 AD, the commencement of the 1260 year reign of the papacy commenced at the end of a sabbatical year. Event number six, A.D. 1798, the end of the sabbatical year, the end of 1260 years of papal persecution. Item number seven, 1840, mentioned in the great controversy also, Josiah Lich had a tremendous fulfillment of prophecy about the fall of the Ottoman Empire. Event number eight, 1844, Josiah Lich, 1840, the year 1847, midst of the week was 1844. What is the coincidence? What is the chance of that being just coincidental? You take AD 27 when Jesus was baptized, sit in front of a computer and start adding sevens. You can do it by 49 since a jubilee is 49 years. You can do it by 49. Start adding 49s and you'll land in 2022. Okay? You'll land in 2015. Very important event. We're going to cover it. 2015. The last sabbatical of earth, in my opinion. Okay? Yes, we could go 20, until 2029. We could. But after seeing these slides we saw, do you think we can go until 2029? The world is destroyed. The, the financial economies of the world are in shambles. Why am I so suspicious of 2022? Because the next sabbatical year will be 2029, and I hope after seeing the first part of this presentation, you too will agree this world will not last that long. It's all about sin. God wants holy people in heaven. Keeping God's Sabbath will not do anything for us if we're not abiding in Christ and doing something to usher in His kingdom. This is why we were told, hand out books, the publications who are going to finish this work. Do something for your Lord. If 2022 is correct, notice what I'm saying, if 2022 is correct, then Yom Kippur, or the Day of Atonement on October 17, 2021, is the year when Jesus will leave the most holy place. Although nothing on earth will show that, he has left until after the fact. It all happens in secret. In heaven it happens, we don't know anything about it. But, according to Leviticus 16, whether it happens in 22 or 29, you got to have, comes out on the Day of Atonement, sins are placed on Satan on the following Day of Atonement. I'm just saying, why am I so suspicious? Because we've never been in this situation. What do you think the COVID vaccine came about? God is trying to warn his people and saying, listen, you almost cannot buy and sell now if you don't take the vaccine. And you think we, you still have time to, that this is coming back? It's a warning. It's a red flag. It should throw a red flag to every Seventh-day Adventist. My, we, before long, we won't even be able to buy or sell. And we don't even have a Sunday law. We cannot prepare physically for what is coming. But we can surely prepare spiritually by obeying what Jesus told Mary. Go and sin no more. The mark of the beast is found on page 592, chapter 36 of the Great Controversy. Michael stands up on page 613, chapter 39 of the Great Controversy. All of chapters 37 and 38 of the Great Controversy take place during the tearing time. Go read them. You're going to see what takes place. What has to happen between, if 2022 is correct, between this Day of Atonement and the next day of atonement. Friends, don't, I, I know I'm going to be called the time setter. I'm not setting time. 
I'm studying scripture, like Samuel Snow was studying scripture. I'm just saying I'm very suspicious of 2022. This is not setting time. I'm just saying, has the world ever been in this situation before? No. All of the economies are crumbled. Yes. We are about to go into a great reset. Yes. We're being told we're going to be persecuted and fined if we don't get a vaccine. Yes. Walmart closes, we can't buy and sell. Friends, God is trying to warn us. Get rid of sin now. You can't afford to lose eternal life over sin. Please, friends, God loves us. He's trying to help us here. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. Paul is saying, what, shall we continue in sin because you've been saved by grace? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin, for he that is dead is freed from sin. Romans 6, 1-7. How can any pastor get up and say, we cannot attain victory over sin? They are false prophets deceived by their own fleshly lust. We are all deceived. We've been playing too long with sin. And God is giving us this last warning. Hey, this is about to happen. Problem is, we don't know. And he's going to root out all the ones that are real or not. If something doesn't happen in the next six months and you go back to your own way of life, you were a fake. Like it happened in 1844, 50,000 came out and a few just remained. This is what's going on. I just happen to think that this time we cried wolf many times, but this time the wolf is coming. My thoughts. Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good and doeth it not, to him it is sin. James 4, 17. The best description of sin in the entire Bible, in my opinion. You know what's good. Are you doing it? When you go to bed at night, are you clean before the Lord? If you're not, you should say, Lord, I'm sorry I did this. But if you're holding on to cherished sin, if you know you're doing something wrong day after day after day and you're still praying at night, friends, this is, not, this is, this is real. This is our eternal life is here at stake. And the test for the 11 hour workers, this is, this is what they're doing. To him that knoweth to do good, they're following all the light they have. They're going to be tested now, like we're being tested. What is the image of the beast? There's a lot more to come that I do not think we have understood before. A lot more. But I think we have to stop here.